Hello, Abby. We are going to do our double replacement lab. There are 15 reactions in this lab. Please make sure that you listen. We did change some of the chemicals in here. We're going to start with reaction number one. We're going to take barium chloride and we are going to place it in with sodium sulfate. And right away you can see a chemical change is happening. And if we can watch, there we go. You can see a nice white powder form. We'll look at that at the end after it's settled out. For your second reaction, we're gonna take silver nitrate and we're going to react that silver nitrate with sodium hydroxide. So you can see a change has occurred right away. You can see that nice solid form. Again, we'll look at that at the end. For your third reaction, we are gonna take lead to nitrate. And we are going to react that with potassium iodide. And you can see a nice bright yellow has occurred. We have a nice color change. Again, we'll let this sit out and we can watch what these look like at the very end for observations. For the fourth reaction, we are going to take a sodium carbonate and we are gonna add hydrochloric acid to it. You should see a nice fizzing right away with that. You have a little heat produced, but you should see a nice bubbling. For the fifth reaction, we are gonna take a sodium hydroxide and we are gonna react it to a cobalt to chloride. A nice quick reaction with that cobalt to chloride. We'll look at that at the end. The color does turn just a little bit as we're watching this happen. For the next or sixth reaction, we are going to take a barium chloride and we are going to react barium chloride with sodium carbonate. Just a nice fizzing occur with that reaction. For reaction number seven, we are gonna take a sodium hydroxide and we are gonna react sodium hydroxide with a copper two sulfide. A nice fast color change occurring for reaction number seven. It's almost jelly-like. Back to this reaction, this is a timed one. That cobalt turns purple right away, and now it is a pink color, still bubble formation in the other one. In reaction number nine, we have a barium chloride, and it will be reacting with a sodium hydroxide. I apologize, it looks like I'm short one. Sodium hydroxide. I think I have the wrong reaction. We're going to do reaction number nine again. We should have saw a nice precipitate form. I may have the wrong one for that. For reaction number 10, oh, here's why. I do have the wrong one. I apologize. We'll do reaction number nine again at the very end. For reaction number 10, we have sodium hydroxide and it is going to react with iron three chloride. Iron three chloride. For reaction number 11, we have sodium hydroxide. I believe I just did reaction number nine. I did. This should be reaction number nine. That's barium chloride. So let's do reaction number 10. Number 10 is sodium hydroxide. I have the wrong color, got off by one. And this one is iron three chloride. 
That looks correct for that one. Reaction number 11 is copper to sulfate, which should be blue in color to start with, and it's going to react with sodium hydroxide. There, that's in the correct order. So this again should be our number 10. This is our number 11. This is barium chloride and hydrochloric acid. That's your number nine. This is our number 10, our iron three chloride and sodium hydroxide. And our number 11, copper two sulfate and sodium hydroxide. For reaction number 12, we have lead to nitrate. Lead to nitrate is reacting with potassium chromate. Beautiful, lead to nitrate, potassium chromate. I'm gonna move this over so that we can see these better. For reaction number 13, we are going to have a sodium hydroxide is reacting with iron nitrate, iron 2 nitrate, a nice reddish color. For the reaction number 14, you should have calcium chloride is reacting with sodium hydroxide. For reaction number 15, we have magnesium sulfate is reacting with lead to nitrate. Let's look back at our reactions one more time. In reaction number one, you can see a nice powder has formed. Let's see if we can just see it better here. We have a nice powdery formation on the bottom here. Again, that reaction for reaction number one is barium chloride and sodium sulfate. Reaction number two is a silver nitrate reacting with a sodium hydroxide. Reaction number three, you can see a powder on the bottom. Reaction number three is going to be our lead nitrate and potassium iodide. Reaction number four, we only have bubble formation in that, and reaction number four was sodium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. Reaction number five originally was purple and now is turned a nice pink color. You can see that solid formation in there. And that is our sodium hydroxide with our copper two chlorate, our barium chloride and sodium hydrox, I'm sorry, yep, sodium carbonate only form a bubble formation. For reaction number seven, we have sodium hydroxide with a copper two sulfide and nice blue and you can actually see it's almost jelly-like, fun stuff. For reaction number eight, we have, we have to redo reaction number eight because that should not look like that. We'll redo reaction number eight. Reaction number nine is barium chloride and sodium hydroxide, which should be a nice powdery formation. Reaction number 10, we are going to see iron three chloride with sodium hydroxide. And this will actually, you can see that thick, almost baby food like formula. For sodium, I'm sorry, Copper two sulfate and sodium hydroxide is your number 11. And this one is almost like a jelly paste. 
For reaction number 12, you have a lead to nitrate and potassium chromate. And you can see a nice yellow precipitate at the bottom. For our last three reactions, we have lead to nitrate and sodium hydroxide. You'll see that thick, you know, almost stick precipitate at the bottom. For calcium chloride, um, and sodium hydroxide, we have a nice white powdery film. And then for our last one is magnesium sulfate and lead to nitrate. And we see a nice powdery form. And so we said we needed to redo reaction number eight. I apologize for that because it is definitely not a clear substance because we have um, a copper in there. So we have copper to sulfate and potassium iodine. So let's set this up real quick and we'll do another reaction for you. So with this, we will put a clear potassium iodide. I'll move these out of the way so we can see this. A nice clear potassium iodide goes in and we put a copper to sulfate, which is a blue color. There, that looks a lot better for that reaction. And you should have saw a dramatic color change with that. And so that is again reaction number eight, potassium iodide and copper to sulfide, a nice great reaction. Those are your double replacement reactions.